Mic check, testing, testing. Uh, hopefully you hear me. Let's see what we got. Mic check, mic check, testing, testing. Uh, hopefully you hear me. Let's see what we got. Testing one, two. Testing check, one, two, check, three. Testing, Checking the mic volume. Uh, Testing one, two, testing one, two. All right, what's up, everyone? Um, it's 10.30 where I'm at. I'm in Philly. I don't know where everyone's based. We've got 15 people tuned in. Um, I'm working on Turnstile from Sound and Fury. Um, so if you haven't heard, I'm trying to finish all of the Sound and Fury stuff. Um, this stuff was filmed and um, overseen by Chris Avis, who ran Cavis Tapes. Um, he's a friend of mine. He uh, was killed in a car accident last July. Um, his family recovered his hard drive. They mailed it to me, and I'm in the process of uh, editing and finishing his work. So here we are. Um, if you haven't seen it yet, I've posted, um, I think, three or four videos already from San and Fury. Uh, I posted uh, Free, which was the last video that Chris edited before he passed, um, released the Harley Flanagan set, and Turnover. So... Right now, I'm working on turnstile. This was a, um, as you can see here, if you're looking at my screen, um, this was a five, one, two, three, four, five camera edit. So basically, um, I'll show you here. Um, <clears throat> Chris had people basically positioned all over the place. Um, Chris was on stage left, which is this top left camera. Um, I believe Robert from Riff Wars slash Ribs Fit was on stage right. Um, he had a stationary camera at the back of the room on a tripod, which is kind of cool. It's like a static shot. Um, he had Jonathan Velasquez in a balcony, sort of like a uh, top shot looking down, I guess. Um, and then there's this one. I don't know. Actually, this is probably Robert's angle. I don't know who this is. Let me, let me look. Um, the other sets I've edited don't have these two angles. I mean, these two angles seem pretty. Um, oh, okay. This is actually a GoPro shot. Um, so for some of the bands, Chris had a GoPro matted on the drum kit, um, which was cool, but it was also very shaky. So I don't know if his decision to move it was because it was shake. Uh, the other bands it was shaking with the with the drums, but. This is pretty cool. I might use, I mean, people seem to want a lot of drum shots because uh, I, I typically don't have a lot of that in my stuff. So um, perhaps 
I will use more of that here. Um, so yeah, this one is the drum stop. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna use it sparingly, but I, but I, I will use it. So anyway, um, what I'm doing now, so basically what I've already done is I've already synced all the angles here. So if you've seen any of these live streams before, you'll know that uh, my process is basically importing all the clips and then running this plugin, um, which I'll show you here, it's called Pluralize. Uh, and again, I'm editing in Premiere uh, Creative Cloud 2018, but you can use Pluralize for, I think, pretty much any modern version of uh, Premiere, any, I think even Final Cut. Uh, Premiere is a, uh, it's made by Red Giant. It's a, uh, I'm not getting paid for this. Maybe I should be getting paid to, to plug them, but I'm basically just telling you, uh, in case you're a video editor and you're uh, wanting to uh, use some of the stuff, same stuff that I do. Um, so Pluralize will <coughs> take any number of audio and video clips and sync them. So typically if you have a multicam shoot like a show or you're doing an interview or you have multiple cameras and multiple audio sources, uh, Pluralize will uh, automatically sync everything for you. So you don't have to do it by hand. Um, so I've already done that, um, again, for the five angles and also these two green tracks here are the audio tracks, um, separate audio tracks, I should say. Um, Chris had a stereo soundboard recording as well as uh, an ambient micro recording, which is what we'll use for the video. Um, I've already applied, so I've done, when I, when I edited the first couple sets, I did, I created basically a preset of um, sort of treatment on the audio. And basically I've applied those, those, um, uh, those effects to this audio here. Cause essentially it's gonna be the same. There might be some minor tweaking, but more or less it's, it's the same. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail about it, but I'll just show you real quick what it is. Um, I can find it. Uh, yeah, so basically uh, what I do is I apply a, um, a parametric equalizer to bring up the highs. As you can see here where my mouse is, I, I've bumped up the highs a little bit. Um, let me just show you. Um, <coughs> so I bumped up the highs just to pick up a little bit more of the crowd, a little bit more of the vocals, and I bumped up the mids. and the low end just a tad. Uh, this is on the soundboard feed. Um, I applied a, basically a preset multi-band compressor that enhanced the lows, enhances the lows, I should say. Um, there's a bunch of these parameter, or a bunch of these presets. I, for the Sound and Fury stuff, I found that the low, enhancing the low end sounds pretty good on the soundboard. Um, again, full disclosure, I am not an audio engineer, so I'm sure if an audio engineer is watching, they might be cringing, because I don't, I'm basically doing the shit that makes sense to me and stuff that works for me, but I'm sure that there are ways of doing this better. Um, for the um, ambient mics, uh, I basically do a similar thing, which I'll show you. Um, I apply parametric, parametric EQ, which again bumps up the highs and a little bit of mids. Um, and I'm also applying a, um, ah, right, so for the uh, for the ambient mics, I'm, I'm doing a multi-band compressor, but instead of enhancing the highs, I'm enha instead, of enhan in instead of enhancing the lows, I'm in uh, instead enhancing the highs, and this is mostly to pick up more of the crowd uh, and more of the uh, ambient. So anyway, um, everything's synced, everything is pretty much ready to go. I might do another pass over the audio when I'm all done, just to tweak it a little bit more, but for now, it's good enough to do, to do this editing. Um, this is a 30 minute set, and so typically my process is I'm gonna watch it straight through and uh, on the screen you'll see all five camera angles playing simultaneously. So let me just make this a little bigger so you can see it. Um, as it's uh, playing, whoops. I just, there we go. Um, <clears throat> as the set's playing, all five cameras which are already synced are playing simultaneously. So. I'm just gonna sit here and click through them. Basically, uh, I mean, every editor has their own uh, style and opinion when to make cuts. Um, if you've watched enough Hate Five Six videos, you probably have a sense of how I like to cut. Um, so I'm gonna try to do that here. Um, again, this is stuff that I did not film, so it's a little bit difficult for me to anticipate when uh, the right cut will work. But hey, I'll make it. I'll make it work. Um, so yeah, this is what the process is gonna be. Um, as always, the, um, these live streams are gonna be pretty interactive, so if you have any questions or comments, feel free to 
leave them in the chat, and every couple minutes I might take a break. I might take a take a break every couple songs, um, just to like, just so I'm not staring at five five uh, screens for thirty minutes. So, um, feel free to leave any comments, and during my break, I will I will respond to you guys. Um, what's up, Leica Leica Space Dog? Thanks for your service. Appreciate you checking in. Um, so yeah, let's. Uh, I don't want to waste any more time, so let's let's get this started.
Cool. Uh, so that's like the first 10 minutes. Um, looks like we got a couple new people. Suede Fork, what's going on? Thanks for tuning in. Brad Smith, good to see you again. Thanks for checking in. Um, so I am working on Turnstile from uh, Sound and Fury. This was uh, June 9th in, uh, in Los Angeles. Um, so I'm finally getting around to it. Um, this is a high energy set, which is a blessing and a curse to edit. It's, it's fun to edit, but it's also difficult because there's so much going on. I want to make sure that I'm capture every time. Every time I make a cut, I want to make sure that I'm I'm actually capturing something that's uh that's exciting or interesting. So, um, it gets uh pretty tedious to just watch for uh watch five four or five camera angles simultaneously and like scanning for what's um where to cut to next. Um, one of the things that I don't like to do is um. Uh, oh shit! You're right. My my editing overlay does say King Nine. Let me let me fix that. Thanks for re reminding me. Um, so while I'm fixing that, and I think my green screen's a little weird. It's like it's like, I think my lighting is off. It's kind of it looks like it's chopping off my head a little bit, but whatever. Um, so what is happening is um, there we go. Cool, that should be fixed now. Um, one of the things I don't like to do is to cut between two angles that are very similar. So um, one of the things that Chris did is, so he has this, so currently on the screen here, if you look, um, he has this angle that is just fixed on a tripod, um, which is actually pretty cool. I, I, I don't do this for my own stuff, but I, I kind of like it, and I think I may do it for this is hardcore, I don't know. Um, so this is a cool shot. It's good for like in between songs or if there's like a crazy crowd reaction, this is a good shot to use. I don't want to use it if there's too much like high energy stuff because that's typically best, at least in my opinion, it's best captured by the angles that are on stage. Um, but what I don't like to do too much is, let me find a good example. Um, give me one second while I like fast forward through this. Um, yeah, so what I don't like to do is I don't like cutting between an, a, a, a perspective like this and then a perspective like this because these are both back of the room shots. And I mean, this one's a balcony shot. It's looking slightly down. So it's, it's definitely different from this perspective, but I don't, I want to avoid cutting too often between them because it's just, it just seems too similar of a cut. Like if I go back and forth from here to here. Um, this is not a great frame to show what I'm talking about, but there are definitely there are definitely times when the balcony shot is very similar to the static shot. So when I'm sitting here cutting, I want it's it's hard for me to know when those moments are. So that's why I have to do a second pass. I'm going to do a second pass later just to make sure I'm not making these redundant cuts. Um, I'm, I want to basically basically make sure that anytime I'm cutting between um, a new angle, it's capturing something different than what the previous angle is actually. Uh, what the previous angle was capturing. Um, cool, we got like almost 20 people in, which is pretty cool. Um, I'm gonna see if I can fix this light because it's chopping off my forehead and that's kind of weird. I don't know if that's gonna help or make it worse. Let's see what we got. Probably made it worse. Um, anyway, I'm not gonna fuck with it, but I'm gonna keep going. So again, we're at the 10 minute mark. Uh, of this 30 minute set and let's keep going. So far it's it's coming along pretty nicely. Um, again, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the chat and I'll I'll check back in with you guys in a couple minutes. What's up IT? Uh, thanks for tuning in. Um, I think this is, yeah, this is my fourth live session and I'm trying to do this a little bit more regularly. One, just to show people what's coming up and two, just to, uh, I don't know, uh, have people see how this stuff works behind the scenes. Um, and also to answer any questions that people have or um, if people have advice for me for making these videos better, I'm happy to hear it. So yeah, I wanna keep this stuff as interactive as possible. So um, cool, let's keep going. Again, so I don't know, um, I'm trying to make this as big as I can for you guys just so you have, you're not like straining your eyes. So let me, Hopefully that's a little better. 
Um, I want to be able to see my timeline down here, but I do want to give you guys, um, guys and girls, uh, something to look at. So you're not squinting. All right, so hopefully that's better. Uh, I'm going to shut up and keep going. That was a little too fast. Uh, I realized I kept making cuts that I didn't like. So I, it's one of those things where uh, once you start fucking up, it's hard to recover. So I'm, I'm going to back up a little bit and redo that. I think I can probably do a little bit cleaner. I, I can probably do a little bit cleaner than that. There were a couple of cuts in there that I thought were really cool. Um, but I started to panic. I started just like randomly clicking. And I was like, this isn't right. So let me, let me back up and, and do some of that part over. Um, What's up, Asia Quarrel? Thanks for tuning in. Alfred Garza, thanks for checking in. Your kind words. Brendan Allman, uh, appreciate that. Um, when I, so this is my 10th year doing Hate by Six. Um, I always hoped that one day people would like care about video. If not mine, then someone's. But I'm glad that uh, uh, people are really appreciating and into live video. Um, I, gr I grew up really digging live video, and it's, it's cool to be able to share um, my love for it with uh, anyone who wants to tune in. So um, I appreciate that, that feedback. Um, so again, I'm going to back up just a little bit. Uh, I wasn't expecting that, like, there's a guest vocal spot right here, or I guess someone just, like, ran up and grabbed the mic, and I sort of missed that cue. Um, so I'm going to just go back and make sure I capture that a little bit better. So let's just back up to the beginning of the, beginning of the song and we'll start over.
was uh, that was a lot, a lot of energy, and it was difficult to do. But I think I did. Again, this is a first pass. Uh, I think that was good enough for a first pass. I'm gonna go back through uh, later tonight or tomorrow morning and and clean it up a little bit more. Uh, so we're about at the halfway mark. Um, looks like we got some more people in. Joel, what's up? Thanks for tuning in. Wholesome Punk, thanks for checking in. Matthew Jones, appreciate the kind words. Um, yeah, so like I said, um, so Turnstile is, a, I haven't filmed them in a while. Um, I'm actually curious when the last time I shot them was. Um, I'll tell you in one second. Um, they're a lot of fun to film because there's always so much going on. Like no matter where you point the camera, you're gonna capture something pretty pretty interesting. Um, shit, I haven't filmed them since October 2016, um, which is kind of crazy. Um, I guess they're playing Philly at the beginning of May. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to shoot that if I if I can get, if I can get permission from the venue, I will. It's a venue that's a little difficult, but I think um, I'll at least try. Um, but anyway, <laughs> um, editing um, editing turnstile is difficult. Like you, like I think someone pointed out, it's uh, there's a, there's just so much going on, and when you're making these cuts, like I like I keep saying, um, I want every cut to just capture the energy and the vibe of it. I don't want to, you know, if something's if there's like a lot of stuff happening on stage and a, uh, an angle's capturing it pretty well. I don't wanna cut to a different angle that's like pointed at something that's just like not moving. So basically during these high energy sequences, um, it's important, at least for me, um, that each cut in each angle is capturing something different um, without losing um, the vibe. Because um, I want the viewer to sort of feel the, the energy and the intensity of that, of that moment. Um, Asia Coral says you got so you got a uh, you got a concussion during Cruel Hand at this is hardcore. I don't remember that. Um, I might remember us talking, but I don't remember you getting a concussion. Uh, hopefully you didn't get taken out on a stretcher or anything like that. I feel like there's only been a handful of times when someone's been taken out of a stretcher at this is hardcore. It happened during um, uh, fuck. It happened during what's the band that played with Kill Switch? Um, I think it happened during Unearth, Unearth, uh, and possibly, um, fuck, I'm blanking on it. It definitely happened that year, at least once or twice, someone got taken out on a stretcher. It was kind of crazy. Um, cool. Oh, so Brad's asking me, um, the toughest or favorite bands to film, um, Turnstile's up there. For a long time, Mindset was up there before they broke up. Um, I think Mindset's the band that I filmed the most, and they were a lot of fun to film. Um, trying to think who else is a lot of fun recently. Vane is a lot of fun. Again, it's like, I like, um, I mean, I happen to like Vane musically, but even if it's a band that I don't like musically, if if they're moving around, um, if there's a lot I, I it basically comes down to, obviously I like filming bands that I enjoy listening to, but I also just like filming bands that have uh, a lot of high energy, whether between the crowd and the band. Um, that's just, it just makes it more, more enjoyable to film. So uh, I think currently like Vane is up there, um, Turnstile still. Um, i trying to think, there was, I like, I mean, Fury is a lot of fun. I like Fury musically. They're not as like, this is not a diss on Fury, but they're not as like thrashy, obviously, or as hectic as like Vane, but, um, th and the crowd goes off in a different way than they do for Vane, and I really like that. I like people like up front singing along, um, and I feel like I see that a lot more at like a Fury, during a Fury set. Um, trying to think like who else? Um, Jesus piece is always cool. Um, I, said this recently, but like, I really enjoyed filming, filming uh, Knock Loose because just the way that the, the kids up front were, were, were jamming to it was just, it made it a lot of fun to just like capture what they were, what they were doing. Um, yeah, so I was, it's funny, I was telling, I was on a, um, a podcast the other day and I was telling him how much I like Fury and I was like, that song, The Feeling is so fucking good, like that riff. 
Um, it's just been stuck in my head ever since I heard it. It's like a, it's like a worm that burrowed a little fucking thing into my brain, and I can't get it out of my head. Um, oh, okay. Asia Carl's asking if I have another angle of. Let me know. Let me know what year it happened. I don't know if I multicammed Cool Hand the year that you're talking about. Um, let me. I'm just curious. Um, if I do happen to have that, um, let's see, Cruel Hand played the Electric Factory, I'm assuming you mean either 2014 or 2015, um, let's see, 2015, 2014, so unfortunately, so unfortunately for 2014 and 2015, I only did a single camera uh, for Cruel Hand. So I'm just checking my uh, my personal archive. Yeah, I don't have multiple cameras for that. So yeah, 2015, I didn't, I did not, uh, unfortunately, capture you. If if it's not in the video that you see online, then I don't have. Unfortunately, I don't have video of it, which is sad. Uh, I do get messages like that a lot from people, like, hey, like. Do you have a shot of me getting punched in the face? It's not on this video. And sometimes, sometimes I do have it because it doesn't make the cut. And it's not because I didn't want it in there. It's just, like I said, there's so much happening when I'm editing a multicam that I'm a, it's, it's inevitable that I'm going to miss something that's, that someone wants to see. So that's just the nature of the beast. Um, but anyway, we are at almost the 15 minute mark of this 30 minute set. So I'm going to keep going. I love this energy. How's everybody feeling? We're a band called Turnstile. Thank you for giving us your time sticking around. This has been a very magical day. And for that, I really want to thank Martine and Riley and anyone that helped put this together. Nate, everyone that helped put this together. All of you for supporting each other and supporting bands and supporting music. I love this. So we're going to play some more songs.
Uh, we're at the 20 minute mark, so we got like 10 minutes left. Um, just gonna go through some of the comments here. Um, what do we got, what do we got? Uh, oh, so, so Brad, you're seeing um, Code Orange this Saturday. Where's that, where's that show at? Um, did you say that's your first time? Oh, okay, you're seeing Turnstile for the first time in June, cool. Yeah, uh, you're gonna have a lot of fun with that. Um, let's see what else we got here. Um, Alfred, you're seeing him for the first time on thir uh, on Tuesday, cool. Um, yeah, if you've seen a Turnstile video, Turnstile videos are obviously like high energy, but once you see it live, it's just like a completely different thing. So hopefully you have fun there as well. Um, what kind of mics? Okay, so uh, I'll answer. So there's two questions here. Did I film this and what kind of mics were you? So I did not film this. Um, this was filmed by my friend Chris Avis. So if you look here, uh, I don't know if I can zoom in, but uh, if you look at my mic or my, uh, my mouse, this guy standing right here, that's Chris Avis. Uh, he ran a site called uh, Cavis Tapes, which I'll show you. Um, So he ran a site called uh, cavistapes.com. Um, he was in charge of filming Sound and Fury and he did a lot of video work like out in California and stuff. Um, he actually passed away in a car accident last July. Um, so you can see like, if you go on his site, his last post was on July 5th. Um, and he released the free set from Sound and Fury. And uh, it turns out like about 10 minutes after he posted this video, um, he was in a car accident and died. Um, yeah, so he he was on tour with a band and their van flipped. Uh, he wasn't driving; he was like in the back seat. But their uh, one of their wheels just like popped, just fell off on the highway. So they like went off the road. Uh, the van flipped. A couple of the guys like broke bones. A couple of guys broke their necks. Like they, those guys recovered at least physically. Um, Chris was the only one who did not survive. Um, so his footage just kind of sat there. Uh, what's crazy is if you go, um, let, me, let me pull it up. Because um, it, it's kind of crazy how this happened. Um, if you go on his Instagram, the, um, so again, it's just, it's just Cavus Tapes. The last thing he posted, the second the last thing he posted was the screenshot. And this was on June 22nd. And he says, time to, Time to get the real work from San, time to get to the real work from San Fury. Editing begins now. Um, and he posted the screenshot and it was a picture of his hard drive. So as you can see, like he literally took a picture of this hard drive that says uh, Red Seagate F drive, Sound and Fury, and it's 707 files. So it was like I saw this and it fucking like broke my heart because like this is something that I would do. Like I, I always post screenshots of my shit and I also always organize all my stuff in a very similar way. And so I, um, I emailed his family and I said, um, hey, like Chris and I like are friends. We like collaborated a couple times. And if you're able to find this F hard drive, the Seagate F Sound and Fury drive, and you mail it to me, I'll finish the work that he didn't get to finish. So um, it took a couple months, but his family was, a was able to find it. And so, that's why I'm doing this. I'm basically doing this to uh, honor my friend's memory. Um, Chris was very good at what he did. And uh, I don't, there aren't many people like him. I mean, there's no one like Chris. And it's, it's just very tragic um, what happened to him. So I'm trying to obviously finish the work that he wanted to get out there. Um, if you go to, um, so I created this page that has all the video, or all the videos that it posted are going to be posted here. It's uh, 856.com slash SAF2017. Um, so there's a little blurb here about Chris. Um, and there's a, a, a PayPal address here for Chris Avis July 5th at yahoo.com. Um, his family set up his PayPal, and they're basically um, trying to do a scholarship in his name. So Chris was also, he was a high school uh, basketball coach. So they're trying to start a fundraiser to um, basically a scholarship to every year to give money to one of the basketball players that were in the program there. 
Um, so if you like these videos, please, please, please consider uh, donating something via PayPal to this account. Um, we wouldn't have these videos if it wasn't for Chris. Um, and honestly, I wish I wasn't doing, I wish he was still here to be editing this because, you know, he, he, could, he knew how to edit his stuff and I'm, I'm just trying to do the best, of that, best that I can with it. Um, but it, it'll never be as good as what Chris could do. But I'm, I'm basically trying to do my best. Um, so someone was asking about the mics that he used. Um, so basically Chris, um, he had a soundboard feed. Um, basically he would record a, um, which is here, it should be one of these tracks. Um, he had a stereo soundboard recording that he would pull from the, the front of house board. And then he also had a, um, some ambient mics that were picking up more of the crowd. And so I, I talked about this last time, but I'm going to point it out again because I think it's it 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 it, taught, it basically it shows you how creative Chris was. Um, so when I when I film a show, um, I keep my audio recorder on top of my camera, so it's always like with me. Chris did something similar. He would always wear um, he always wore a hat when he filmed. And if you look in this in, if you look in this video, um, you'll see him in the background. Um, let me, let me just pull it up real quick. Um, where's a good shot of Chris? So, um, he's always standing in the back. Like he was not, no, he was not really, he didn't put himself out there publicly, um, but he was always there and he was always getting like amazing footage, but he was always off to the side. Um, I'm trying to find a good shot of him. I'll point him out to you. Um, where you at? Where you at? You can kind of see him here. Let's see. That's not a good shot. So, we're... all right, it's kind of dark. I'll zoom in so you can kind of see it. Um, so here on the, the right, very right-hand side, you'll see Chris, he's holding a camera here. Uh, and he's wearing a hat, and he always wore this hat. And so I'll, actually, I have a video of him, or I have a picture of him that I'll show you. Um, under... So this is Chris. Um, he always wore this hat when he filmed. Uh, I don't know if it was always the same hat, but he always wore a hat, basically. And he basically, he would keep, um, he had very small uh, microphones that he actually, uh, he put holes in his hat and had the microphones sticking out of his hat. So basically, um, uh, similar to me, where I always keep my recorder on me just so it's, the audio is picking up from my perspective. He had his mics uh, mounted in his hat, and I think that's just, it was easier for him to do it that way. And I always thought that was brilliant. But what's, even, what's, what's really cool is that uh, if you look at his logo, uh, so his logo is a hat, and if you look very closely here, um, this thing in the middle is a microphone. So I, I always admired that he incorporated, uh, you know, this thing, like this was his thing, keeping the microphone in his hat was his thing. And that was, that was why, that's how he was able to get such really clean audio. Even without a soundboard feed, he was able to get really clean audio. And um, I just love that he put it in, in his logo here, uh, his hat and his microphone. So that's Chris. Um, again, uh, TNA, TNA Media is checking in. Yeah, Cave, Cave is taped forever, seriously. Um, he was in a league of his own, and uh, I miss him dearly. And I, I really hope that people realize that, like, it's, so it's easy to sort of like watch a video and just like skip around to the next video and not realize that someone is behind it. Um, you know, Chris dedicated so much of his life to just filming uh, shows and traveling for them. And I don't know if a lot of people knew the person behind it. So um, I hope that like me doing this actually will help people realize that, you know, this is like, get, I want people to get a, some glimpse of what Chris was like as a person. Um, he was very creative, and he he was really um, focused on helping bands get exposure and helping connect people to 
uh, new music and helping people find bands. And I think like that's why we clicked because we realized that we have so much in common together with respect to how we thought about um, filming shows and what it meant to actually, you know, distribute the stuff and put it out there for people to see. And so Chris was really um, dedicated to his craft. Um, Anyway, so we are at about the, where are we at? We are at the 20, 22 minute mark. Um, so we are, we got about probably like 10 minutes left on this. Yeah, about 10 minutes left, so let's, let's keep going. Again, if you have any comments, questions, leave them in the chat. Um, but yeah, let's keep going.
Cool. Uh, so that's it for the turnstile set. That was a pretty, pretty wild ending. Um, got a couple of comments here. Um, do I call so of although media productions is asking if I color grade. Um, so Chris did a little bit of um, modification. So when he was, um, I think what he was doing, I think he did a little bit of uh, adjustments using uh, the Lumetri color. Oh, I, I don't know if he was using Premiere. I think he, no, he was using um, Vegas. Um, but judging from the video he did for free, I think he did a little, little bit of adjustment. So um, what I've done for these videos, um, I've, I've tweaked the... Um, if you can see where my mouse is, I, I, I haven't done it yet, but what I'm going to do uh, later tonight or tomorrow is work on uh, matching the, ma ma basically trying to match the, um, the colors of the various angles a little bit. So I'm going to be adjusting the exposure, the contrast, the highlights, uh, the temperature a little bit. Nothing too crazy. Um, for my videos, like stuff that I filmed, I do a little bit more. I do like, you know, some RGB, um, adjusting the RGB curves. I don't really, I, I don't really mess with like LUTs, um, mostly because I, I'm not trying to, unless I'm, unless it's like a really important set that I know that it's going to be on a DVD or something crazy. Um, I don't spend too much time doing color correction. Um, I basically spend enough time to match the angles as, as closely as I can, just so it's somewhat uniform. And, um, I like giving the videos a little bit of warmth, um, in terms of color. Um, so that's like the extent of what I do. Like I said, if it's, if it's like a pretty big project that I know is for something larger than just going on the internet, then I'll spend a lot more time doing color grading. Um, I've seen some pretty crazy dives over the years. I should, I've been meaning to work on like a stage dive compilation, but I have not done it yet. Um, so, okay. So people are asking the, who was playing bass? That's a very good question. So I believe that's, um, so s there's two twins, two women are twins. It's Sophie. And so it's basically the, the singer Firewalker and the bassist for Crime Watch are twins. One of them, his name is Sophie, and I'm blanking on the other one's name. Fuck. Um, but I believe this is Sophie from Firewalker. I'm assuming because because uh, she plays bass in Crime Watch. So I believe that's her. I might be messing it up. If I am, please someone let me know, and I apologize because I don't. Uh, it's my own damn fault for not knowing um, their names. Um, but yeah, so that was cool. I wasn't expecting to see her uh, do that, but that was actually a lot of fun to see. Um, I don't remember asking a Tre someone named Trevor if they were okay, but maybe I did. I don't know. Uh, so that's basically, this is basically it for the turnstile set. Again, this was the first pass. Um, what I'm going to do, I got to take a little bit of a break. It's like 1130 right now. I'm going to be up for a while, but I'm going to take a break. Um, but the next step is going to be um, basically watching it through one more time and making sure all of these cuts look good. Um, again, making sure that I'm capturing, um, make sure I'm capturing the, 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 the energy that I want to capture. And then also making sure that they're timed correctly. Um, I, I like cutting on time with the beat, and sometimes when I'm sometimes when I'm watching five angles and simultaneously, I might be slightly off by like a couple fractions of a second. So I'm going to go through and make sure everything's timed exactly how I want it to be timed. Um, then after that, I'm going to um, basically do like a, like I just talked about, do a little bit of color correction just to match the angles a little bit. I. When I was doing turnover, that was pretty difficult because all all five cameras that were used are different, so uh, they each capture colors and light a little differently. So it's very difficult. It can be very difficult to match them. So um, I suspect that's going to be the hardest part is to do that. So, um, so yeah. So Alfred is asking when this is going to be available. So I'm trying to have this up for tomorrow. So it, it's it's what it's 11:30 p.m. on Tuesday. Um, I'm coordinating with Riley from Sound and Fury, so he and I are working together to basically plan out when these videos are, when these videos are going to get posted. Um, so uh, we're t we're trying to get this out for tomorrow. So that's why I'm spending uh, a late night working on it. So um, if I can get it done, then I'm going to uh, if I can get it done, then I'm going to uh, have it out ready for tomorrow. So 
I'm, it might be a late night for me, but I might also have to wake up tomorrow morning to, to wrap it up. But uh, hopefully it's up tomorrow. Um, oh, shit. Okay. So you're right. I remember your friend had a seizure at the Philly show. Okay. I didn't know that was Trevor, but I'm glad he's... Uh, yeah, that was scary. I remember he got hit or something, and then he just, like... Uh, he like fell backwards and started seizing. It was really, it was really fucking scary. Um, but I'm glad. I'm hoping, like I said, I'm hoping he's all right. Um, yeah. So, uh, all the media. I'm hoping that answers your question. When I say first pass, is this, so basically what you just watched was me doing a first pass where um, I'm sitting, sitting, and sitting through and watching the video once straight through, and um, uh, cutting through the angles, and then. Uh, the second pass is going to be um, basically uh, making sure everything is timed correctly. Um, so that's it for me. Like I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hop off and take a break, and then I'm going to spend another couple hours uh, tweaking this. But that's it for me. Um, hopefully you guys check in. If you have any other questions, um, feel free to hit me up. Again, it's... 856 on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all that good shit. Um, I'll probably be back on live tomorrow at some point. Um, I'm working on digitizing some old tapes. So I'm probably going to, tomorrow I'm going to work on uh, possibly a Hate Breed set. Uh, Hate Breed, Shy Hulud, and I think Cave In from um, February of 99, I think. So I just got those tapes in the mail, so I'm probably going to work on that tomorrow. So maybe I'll do, maybe I'll be on live for that tomorrow. Um, but cool. Uh, thanks for tuning in, and I will see you guys soon. Have a good night.